All right. Well, thank you all so much for having me today. My name is Greg Ryan. I'm a campus ergonomist at the University Health Services here at Berkeley. And like you see there, we're going to be talking about setting up uh, your workstation at home ergonomically. Um, I want to thank you all for taking time today to, to listen to me. Um, hopefully learn a few things about ergonomics and how to be safe at the computer. Uh, I want to thank you all for putting in the, the survey questions. Uh, I'll try to address as many of those as I can, uh, but that was really, really helpful uh, to hear the concerns um, that a lot of us have on the computer. So uh, let's get started. Um, I've been on campus for about 13 years now, um, and I deal with a lot of computer issues. I also deal with other ergonomic issues on campus, so custodians, food service workers, basically anybody with ergonomic risks on campus. So uh, we'll be focused a lot on, you know, obviously computers today and working at home, uh, which a lot of us are doing and, and trying to uh, trying to balance it out. So uh, things have changed quite a bit. Um, as we all know, uh, we're still kind of going through it. And a lot of this is, is my story, um, kind of anecdotally, and a lot of my clients that I've been working with uh, in home situations, and then also staying up to date on the current research. Uh, there was a, uh, a conference last week on ergonomics, and a lot of it was, was focused on home and just the, the changing world we live in. So, you know, I, I think a lot of us are on laptops all the time now instead of, you know, having a comfortable desktop computer sometimes and a, a nice big screen. Um, and especially as you know, I'm a little bit older now, I'm coming up on 50 and your eyes start to go at certain times. So, um, you know, eye issues are seeing a lot of those more and more and more. Uh, we're obviously on Zoom a lot more. It's a lot more screen time. Um, so our eyes are really, really impacted. So we'll talk about a few ways to, to help those out. Uh, our furniture, you know, one thing I could say is everyone is different. Everyone's situation is different. When I do home evaluations, um, you know, some people have the Mercedes Benz of setups, and then there's a lot of Yugos and other uh, setups out there as well. It's um, everyone's situation is different. So we got to work with what we got. Um, everyone's probably going to need some type of external equipment to make it safe and we'll talk about that uh, but we will do, we'll discuss ways to make your you know home furnishings as safe as possible and I think a lot of us are dealing with that um, ergonomics in a, in a controlled environment is difficult in an office environment where we have good furniture we still battle the heights of desks and and the heights of things because most things are made for you know the 95th percentile tall man, uh, which is like six foot two, six foot three. So anything that doesn't move static desks are made to fit that type of human. Uh, dining room tables are even higher. Uh, kitchen counters are very high. So we're often dealing with a lot of high work surfaces and a lot of us aren't six foot two, six foot three. Um, so we have, we have a challenge there. Uh, we lose a lot of control in, in, in our spaces as well. Um, I know we don't tend to think of lighting as uh, as being an issue at home, but it is. Uh, we've seen a lot of research with eye issues. Uh, you can't control the lighting as easily. Um, it fluctuates throughout the day. Uh, so even though we might hate the fluorescent lights at work, they are very controlled. They're very consistent, which is very easy on our eyes. And so we lose a lot of that at home. And, um, and then just trying to balance things out. Uh, like I said, it's, it's just not easy being on the screen all day at home. We do have new distractions uh, at home, and every, I know all the distractions are different. Uh, you know, I have a cat, not a dog, but um, they can be distracting. We have other things going on at home. We have different furniture. Some of us have little ones. Some of us are dealing with our parents. Uh, you know, that's what my little one's dealing with now. She's work, you know, going to school from home and constantly yelling at me to move if I'm at that house at the house that day move places and so I'm constantly moving and trying to set up in a different place and it's not easy uh, so we're, we're moving a lot more um, which can be good and bad and all kind of different situations we can go on all day with these things but um, we do want to set priorities and we do want to have some kind of control over our space as much as possible. 
so the first thing I try to do with ergonomics with most of my clients is just find a good, solid, dedicated space where we can have control, as much control as we can, get it as, you know, as close to a desktop as possible uh, and kind of go from there. So even though our environments have changed, our distractions have changed, the physical demands on our body really haven't. Uh, and if we're on the computer for long periods of time, which is really where this, this research comes from, uh, Cornell University and uh, Dr. Alan Hedge, uh, we want to still be moving and changing our postures quite a bit and be supportive. So if we are sitting, we don't want to sit for you know, generally longer than 20 minutes. And I know that's really difficult to do. But if we are sitting for longer periods of time, we want to be supported. Uh, we want to have good lower back support. We want to have good upper back support, like the lady in the bottom right, uh, bottom left picture there. Uh, elbows by your sides, wrists nice, nice and straight. Uh, so you want really good support from the chair. And I think that's one of the things we're lacking a lot of at home. We don't have these nice ergonomic chairs or even adjustable chairs a lot of times. Uh, and we don't have adjustable desks either. So they don't move up and down and it's hard to make, you know, get into a good standing position. But if you want to think about, you know, how the human body is supposed to work at the computer for every half an hour period, ideally you want to be sitting for 20 minutes, standing for eight minutes and moving around for two minutes. Uh, that's really difficult to do. And I know there's, there's research and reality for us. Uh, I think the one thing that the house, the home does afford us is to move more if, if we pay attention to it. Uh, so we're still trying to move a little bit more, change our positions a lot more. The research that I'm seeing coming from the home is that that's not what's happening. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we all get stuck on the couch. We all get stuck in the, in certain situations and certain postures uh, and that long-term sitting or long-term standing uh, can have issues on the body. And so we're going to talk about ways to, to alleviate that as best we can. So talking about a little bit about equipment, um, what you're going to need to work safe. And I think the one thing we're all kind of grappling with is the laptop. It's mobile. You can move with it, but it's not ergonomic. If your hands are in the right place, your neck is not, you're looking down in a flexion of your neck, which is not good. Uh, if your head is in the right place, your hands will be really high. So there's no way to work at a, at a laptop safely for long periods of time. And that's kind of what the unfortunate part of this is. So the research on laptops is one hour a day max without external devices. So without an external keyboard, without an external mouse, an external monitor. So what, some way to separate the, the visual target from your hands. Uh, so the input devices from the screen. We have to separate those somehow. And there's different ways to do that. And, and again, everyone's situation is a little bit different. Um, you know, most people, an external keyboard and mouse, a mini keyboard, a smaller mouse, or, you know, tends to work pretty well. Uh, and that way, at least you can get your hands in the right place. And then you can raise the screen up, your monitor um, or your laptop screen with some books or a laptop lifter or some way to change that. Uh, so we'll talk about a few ways to do that. You can also use in that first picture of myself there on the left, you can also use an HDMI cable to your laptop. So you can take an HDMI cable, plug that into an external monitor. Uh, I used an older TV set there that I just pulled out. Um, a lot of people can mirror it or use an older TV to plug in. Uh, so an HDMI cable and a laptop can go a long way because uh, you can get your hands in the right place. A lot of people really prefer to use their laptop uh, input devices, the keyboard and the, the pointing device in the central central area, area there. Uh, so that works for a lot of people. Um, and a lot of people like a regular keyboard and mouse. Uh, and a lot of people like an ergonomic keyboard and mouse, like the upper right there, where it's a little bit split and it's more of an ergonomic setup. So I think, you know, number one is trying to separate the devices and then, you know, make it as comfortable as possible. Uh, if you want to use ergonomic devices and that's what's better for you, um, that helps, but you know the first thing is to get the the separation of the keyboard uh, and the monitor. What we also want to do is, is create multiple different areas. So, like I said, we want one primary area where we're we're setting that up as close to a desktop as possible. If we have an external monitor, great, or a larger monitor, that's really ideal. Uh, if we have an external keyboard and mouse, that's ideal as well. We want to make that station as comfortable as possible. Unfortunately, a lot of times, like you're seeing there, in my position, I have a dining room chair. Um, you know, use some pillows, use some cushions. Uh, maybe a rolled up yoga mat for some foot support. Uh, and that's kind of what happened with me. I noticed that the foot support was very, very difficult uh, with dining room tables. 
uh, and even around the house. Um, I was using shoes for a while. My wife really doesn't like shoes in the house. So I went to a yoga mat at that point for, for an anti-fatigue mat. Um, so it constantly kind of changed and everyone's situation is, is a little bit different. For me, I'm used to moving around quite a bit. So I try to stand a little bit more at home and I notice my legs getting quite fatigued and, and tired quickly. Uh, so we do want to create a standing station and a primary workstation and be able to move around the house a little bit. So there's a lot of risks uh, around the house. Like I said, the dining room tables, we can make them work, but they're really, really high. Uh, and so you do have to use some type of cushions or support, foot support, thigh support to get things in the right place. Um, you know, a lot of the higher counters there, like you see me to the right upper looking kind of like a, a bad excuse of Michael Jackson pose or something that you don't have a lot of foot support. You tend to lean forward and a lot of us are leaning forward towards our visual target and onto our arms. Uh, so I did see a lot of the, the survey questions about, you know, where to where are some good places you can lay down and we'll discuss ways of that. But I really, we really try to avoid uh, the bedroom as much as possible. So you can see that's my daughter there on the bottom right, um, reaching and leaning and rounded back. And it's, it's really no good support there. Uh, so a lot of the support at home is either too soft or too hard. We have to augment it somehow. Um, the couch is really, really tough. And you can see a lot of times it's leaning forward, leaning on our arms, and that force goes into our shoulders, up into our neck. Uh, we hold a lot of tension in our neck area anyway, our trapezius. Uh, so we see a ton of neck issues um, working on the laptops for, for long periods of time. Uh, but it's very, very human. We all tend to lean towards our visual target. Our head tends to really come forward, uh, like in the upper left and the upper right there. Uh, it's super, super calm. Uh, and so we all have to kind of fight that, um, that, that natural tendency to lean forward and lean on our arm. So I'm always looking for postural support, balance, um, or just good, good posture. So we'll talk about ways to attain that. You know, one is, like I said earlier, using some pillows, using some cushions, trying to get things at the right height. So we always want our elbows by our sides. We want the keyboard and mice right about elbow height, you know, just like the ergonomics in the office. Um, so here she's using a separate keyboard and mouse. She can get her wrist straight there. Um, she's getting some good lower back support with a cushion, some upper back support uh, with a towel or something there. And your shoulder blades, your lower shoulder blades should you know, should be touching the chair. That's when the chair is actually doing what it's supposed to do. Hold up your body, act like a, like an external support, uh, like an exoskeleton, basically. So your arms are free. They can move around. Um, if they're resting, there's not a ton of pressure, but you can see if she starts to lean forward and starts to put her body weight onto our hands, that's, that's can cause some problems. So for the sitting position, I'm always going for really good postural support. Like good foot support, um, sometimes a box or like I said, a rolled up yoga mat can work, some thigh support, some cushions there to get raise you up so your elbows are right about uh, in line with the keyboard device or in line with uh, the top of the work surface. And then some way to separate the screen. So you can see there she's got some books and then like a laptop lifter, which is basically a kind of like a fancy cookbook stand, but it, it'd be able to lift your laptop a little bit so you get that about eye, eye height. Um, so that's looking pretty good. She's well supported. Her neck's in a good position. Her ears are over her shoulders, over her elbows, over her hips. So she's in a really good posture. And again, this is for shorter, you know, for short periods of time. You want like 20, 30 minutes and we want to keep moving a little bit. Uh, but for that sitting position, we're really looking for that good support. Again, using some pit pillows, using some cushions uh, and trying to get everything in line with the top of the work surface there. So, and every, you know, everyone's a little bit different. Some people like a couple monitors, some people like one monitor. Like I said, I've had a lot of success with that one situation on the left there, where you use an HDMI cable, you just plug it into a different screen. Uh, and you know, a lot of people, especially that have grown up on laptops are really comfortable, really proficient with their, their laptop keys uh, and pointing device and they prefer that. So that's a good way to go. Uh, a lot of people that, especially with wider shoulders uh, on the right there, that picture, it's a more of an ergonomic keyboard, more of a standard, you know, larger mouse so I can, can kind of open up the shoulders a little bit. So, I mean, generally the ergonomic split keyboards are for people with wider shoulders, 
uh, I said my first go-to is just getting some external devices so you're not working directly off the laptop because that's just not safe for long periods. Um, so this is my daughter set up here. You know, she's five foot. Uh, I have a lot of clients at Berkeley that are five foot under, uh, and that seems to be our issue. You know, the tables are all about 30 inches high, which again is good for somebody like six foot two. So I got to get her up in the air a little bit more, use like a box to give her some foot support. Um, and then sometimes for shorter periods of time, the middle position where your hands aren't perfect and your neck isn't perfect isn't a horrible position. So if you're at a coffee shop or at the house for shorter periods, this isn't horrible. Um, I just wouldn't, you know, you just can't do this all day. But she is getting some decent support there in the lower back and upper back. Um, and her head's not in a, you know, it's not perfect, but it's, it's a little bit better. And a lot of times it's not, especially working at home or mobile, it's not a game of perfection. It's a game of a little bit better, a um, little bit better support here, you know, a little bit more support there. So there's some alternatives again, um, sometimes using external keyboard and mouse in the bottom right picture there on some kind of, um, a lot of people have lap desks. A lot of times you can use just um, boxes or certain things as well, some low key, uh, cheaper type of um, ergo fixes. Uh, and like I said, there's a laptop lifter on the upper right there that gets the screen at the right height, gets the eyes about to the top of the screen. Again, you don't need to use a laptop lifter. You can use books, um, but you can get the lifters. Um, you know, they're generally about $20 or so on Amazon. They, they fold up there. If you are mobile and you're going to coffee shops when they open up again, um, that sort of thing, they, they could be helpful because they do fold up nicely because you don't want to carry around a bunch of books. So that's your kind of sitting station. We want to make sure you're comfortable in a sitting position. And that's really my, my area of concern for most people because it's hard to find good supportive postures, sitting postures at home. So you got to spend a little time, find a good space, tinker with the chair a little bit, tinker with your support, uh, and then also have a standing uh, space available so you can move there. Uh, the kitchen works really well for this. Uh, generally, the, the countertops are like you know 34 to 36 inches, um, which is pretty good for someone that's five foot. If you're a little taller than that, you might have to use a box like she has here, a game box or a 2000 uh, piece jigsaw puzzle set, whatever works for you. Um, that raises it up a few inches. And again, getting that keyboard and mouse right about elbow height. Uh, I've seen this set up quite a bit in the kitchens where you use the uh, microwave uh, to raise the laptop up a little bit, get that at the right height. Uh, and then you're in a good posture. Um, so again, you're standing and take a little pressure off your low back. Sitting for long times is really tough on your lower back. Uh, if you sit on the couch for longer periods, you'll get up and feel your hips and lower back a little bit. So standing again, not for long periods, but for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, an hour or so. Listen to your body. If your feet start to hurt, sit down. Uh, I'm really big on yoga mats. Roll them up for foot support or undo them and use them for foot support while you're standing. Uh, they help out. So finding a standing position is really, really helpful. Uh, like I said, I've gone through a transition. I was not using anti-fatigue mats. My feet started hurting. Uh, I started using a yoga mat. Changing your foot position often. So though on the left position there, it's a, more of a staggered stance. Um, that takes a little pressure off your lower back, lifting your leg up a little bit. So some people use a box, uh, foot support. Uh, sometimes they lift their leg up. Um, sometimes you can open up a cabinet uh, if you're in the kitchen and you can get a leg up there as well. Uh, so that takes a little pressure off your low back. Uh, and again, we're still looking for that good ergonomic position, elbows by your sides, wrists pretty much straight. Uh, and there's, you know, just different ways to get to similar positions in different parts of the house. You know, use what you got. Um, these are adjustable, the ironing boards, uh, they come in handy because uh, they can adjust to a lot of different positions. So there's bigger ones, smaller ones. Uh, if you have those around the house, they can be handy for creating a standing station. Like I say, use the yoga mats, change the positions up um, and you know, try to find different screens throughout the house. Um, in, in, the, in the big picture, you know, in terms of your ears, sometimes it's, it's really nice to have the, the noise canceling headphones, especially if you're in a tough environment where there's, there's sounds going on, obviously. It's better for your ear to hear from a, from a normal device, uh, 
but I do definitely promote headsets, wireless headsets if possible, so you can still move around. Uh, but I know we are zooming a lot these days. Uh, so there's a lot of screen time. Uh, so just having that headset does allow you to move around, does help. So the couch, uh, I think we all get here. Um, I've seen a lot of different trainings. We can tell people not to get here. It's not a great place to be. It's soft. It's not good for your body. This is all true, uh, but people get here anyway, so we should address it. Uh, well, you know, we want to stay away from these types of positions. So you can see there's not a, just a ton of support. I mean, the one on the left there is not horrible, but um, the other two are pretty, you know, the ones on the left are, are pretty bad where you're leaning forward, the couch is soft. So it may not feel hard and it may feel comfortable. And that's where I think a lot of us get up after two hours and go, ow, you know, my lower back, my hips are really, are really hurting because you're not in a, in a good position. You are in an awkward posture. You just can't feel it. Uh, so do take the time uh, to set yourself up a little bit better. You know, you may need a little bit of foot support. Um, really lower back support is critical on the couch. So using something a little bit harder uh, to really support that lower back and again, upper back support. So the entire back should be supported lower all the way up to the you know, shoulder blades, mid shoulder blade level, and then all the same biomechanical principles, elbows by your sides, wrist straight. That's a pretty good position. Again, shorter periods of time, but that's not too bad. You can see his head's in a pretty good position. It's still a small screen. After a while, it tends to happen. You tend to start looking down. You tend to start hunching your shoulders and leaning forward to that screen. But again, for shorter periods of time, this is pretty, pretty good for the couch. And like I said, keep moving. Uh, easier said than done, like a lot of things I do, but you try to keep moving around the house, alternate stations. It's okay to be unsupported or laying down for shorter periods of time, um, you know, because you can see you can maintain the curves of your back. You can, you know, get into a decent position, uh, but you can't hold on to this all day. So anytime you're working more than, you know, an hour at a computer, uh, you need some back support. So this is good for working on your posture, working on your core, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes max. It's like kind of sitting on a yoga ball. Those are fine as well uh, for working on your posture, but you can't support that all day. Uh, it's going to start putting a lot of internal stress on your musculoskeletal system. But for short times, they're, they're okay. So let's talk a little bit about lighting. Um, and I know I've shouted off a lot of information there. So uh, if anyone has any questions um, at this point, please, please let me know if you can. It's always a little awkward when we're doing the Zoom presentations. Um, but if there's any questions that come up, it's a small enough group, I think. Yeah, I unmuted everyone if you want to take yourself off mute to ask a question or put one in the chat. Yeah, if you could throw something in the chat too, uh, we could check those at the end. So I discussed lighting a little bit at home. It's, it is very, very difficult. I think it's one of those things that um, we just don't realize until it starts to affect us. So, you know, we like looking out of windows. Um, it, it's good for, the, you know, our well-being. Uh, it's good to see greenery. It's good to see outdoor space. Uh, but it's very, very tough on our eyes, those transitions. So when we go from a dark room to a very light space or from a light room, you know, the opposite, those transitions are really, really tough on our eyes. Uh, so throughout our house, um, houses, living spaces, you can see the transitions. There's a lot more than, than are at the office. Uh, so we are seeing a lot of eye issues. Uh, and then we're seeing a lot more screen time, Zoom time. So what generally happens there, when we focus on a screen, our blink rate slows down. So our eyes tend to dry out and get irritated. And we tend to see a lot of eye issues. Uh, so eye issues are a huge deal right now. Uh, for some people, they're very debilitating, uh, trigger migraines, um, all kind of neck issues. Uh, TMJ, you know, all kind of things. So eyes can be really, really debilitating. Uh, there's a few things we can do. Um, a lot, a lot of the things. It's about duration. So 
you know, it's easy for me to say, don't, you can't be on Zoom meetings all day long, even though you have them back to back to back, but you got to find out some way to give yourself a break. Um, so a researcher came up with the 20, 20, 20 rule. Basically, that's every 20 minutes, you want to take a 20 second break and look at something at least 20 feet away. So the moral of the story there is you want to change your focal length of your eyes often as much as possible. So instead of focusing on the screen, look at something away for a little bit, take your eyes off the screen. That helps the blink rate increase. Uh, again, really easier said than done, I know. Um, so there are things uh, on your phone you can put on that gives you a reminder to take a break. There's, there's apps within Google, um, iApps that'll you know probably annoy you because every 20 minutes they pop up and tell you to take a break, which is, can be really annoying. But uh, everyone's situation is a little different. Like I say, if you're getting migraines and serious issues, then you need to take the breaks really seriously too. Um, so the other issues are glare uh, and at home and getting a lot of different you know, light sources. Uh, so we always wanna try to reduce that glare, those hot spots on, on your screen as much as possible. A uh, good way to check that is some, when your screen is off, uh, looking at it, you can kind of see the hot spots a little bit more. So the screen should be black. You shouldn't be seeing a lot of reflection uh, when your screens are turned off. Uh, so setting that up 90 degrees to a window so that you know there's the outside light isn't you know, directly hitting the screen. Um, you know, sometimes turning an overhead light off or you know, dealing with the external light in a room that way. You always want the contrast to be about the same, meaning the, the lighting of the room about the same lighting as, as the screen. You don't want a really bright screen in a dark room or vice versa. So again, those transitions are, are really tough on the eyes. Uh, and you don't want that window directly behind or in front of you uh, for the glare reasons. So again, you want that 90 degrees, even though I really like looking out the window, um, but I'm having a lot of eye issues now. So um, I think it's one of those things we like to do it. We like to look out the window, which is good for short periods, but that transition all day long just stress out your eyes. It basically makes the eye muscles tense. And then over time that brings about nearsightedness and, and eye issues. So we want to try to get those as, as comfortable as possible. Breaks, again, one of those things that comes into uh, easier said than done. Uh, one of the things that's jumping up from the research from people working at home that you would think it's really easy to take a break, but what the research is showing is that we're, we're not. Uh, we're getting stuck in comfortable positions and we're staying there for way too long. Uh, so again, it comes back to, you know, setting reminders. There's a really good break time ergo software program called RSI Guard. Uh, it's pretty robust. It picks up on how much typing or mousing you're doing and then gives you some stretches to do throughout the day. Um, there's a free 45 day trial. I think there's actually a six month trial right now um, during the COVID time that you can test it out so uh, again those can get kind of annoying um because they do pop up but at least it picks up on how much work you're doing it's not just a, a 20 minute timer that's that sort of thing uh but we're also we're we are seeing something around this 20 minute zone in terms of human health and and human performance uh definitely on the ergonomics of the biomechanics you're seeing 20 minutes there if, if a muscle is stretched longer than it's it's normal you know, length for 20 minutes, you start to get scarred tissue, start to get tearing in the tissue. Uh, you also start to get muscle uh, oxygen deprivation at about 20 minutes. Um, you know, the TED Talks are all about 20 minutes concentration wise after about 20 minutes or so, you start to lose that. Uh, eyes wise, again, it's about 20 minutes. So we're seeing this, you know, this theme and we really gotta be, be aware of it. And it's again, easier said than done, but, um, Staying hydrated, drinking lots of water, helps you go to the bathroom, helps you take a break, trying to move as much as possible, doing things that you enjoy. Um, I know a lot of people ask for stretches they can do or things they can do around the house. I think, you know, one of the best things you can do is just stand up and, and walk. Uh, one of the issues is sitting for long periods of time and that what the effects that have on the lower back. Walking is really good for the lower back. It takes stress off. It gets some blood flow there. We don't have a ton of, of blood supply to the lower back. So that's really, really helpful. I think I really like stretching out my, my wrists, uh, shoulders, upper back, trapezius area. Because um, kind of what happens is we tend to hunch over. Our shoulders tend to, you know, our chest muscles tend to get, tend to get tight and our shoulders tend to get rounded. So, you know, strengthening our back muscles, being able to retract, pull our shoulders back, um, doing some stretches like those throughout the day. 
always doing some kind of postural work. Um, it's kind of, you know, weird, but you want to be thinking about it, you know, yoga, Pilates, or just checking every once in a while, doing some stretches around posture. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not working on it, it's going to get worse, but we're always working against, you know, 15 pounds of air and gravity above us. Uh, so any way we can get, you know, in a better position against that, that's going to help us. And that's where the chair comes in, um, you know, working with what you got at home and finding a comfortable position, at least for part of the day where your body can be supported, your muscles can relax, your arms can be free, you're not leaning on your arms, you know, and you're, you're free to move. So finding that good position is, is really critical. Uh, and that's really hard because the, the computer really wants you to go towards it. Uh, so I always go to that, you know, that ergonomic key of my shoulder blades, touching the chair, uh, knowing it's not going to be perfect. There is no perfect posture all the time. It's always changing. So, you know, a little bit of awareness goes, goes a long way with that. Uh, and then figuring out what, what your tendencies are. You know, if you hold tension in certain places, um, focusing on that. I think foam rollers, um, the research is very strong for those on posture and just being very, very good for neck, back, um, ways to break up muscular adhesions. Uh, unless you have like a masseuse at home, um, the foam rollers or the massage balls or any kind of rolling or self massage really helps. Um, Cause like I say, your muscles kind of get stuck and they get adhesed and you got to kind of break those up by stretching or sometimes getting in there, massaging those out. So you know, using foam rollers and those external devices, those really do help and, and good for your body and, and mind as well. Uh, so I think it's hard to find those balances, you know, I just take, t trying to take a lot of breaks, but it, you do tend to be more efficient that way. Um, so kind of like NASCAR, generally the car that takes them the more breaks, they tend to win. Um, but there's something about taking breaks more often for shorter periods of time, uh, for human performance and trying to get away from that. Oh, long one, you know, break in the morning and long one break in the afternoon, but these kind of short mental physical breaks, uh, tend to help out the body. Um, so devices, you know, I put these in the PowerPoint. These are the ones we use here for Berkeley for our uh, faculty and staff, uh, for our remote workers. You know, like I say, these are pretty very basic for the most part, external keyboards and mice just to try to separate uh, the screen from the input devices. There's a few ergo, like some, you know, vertical mice there that you know some people like put their hand in a different position some split ergonomic keyboards like i said earlier generally for people with wider shoulders but um you know we do do classes specifically on keyboards and mice and you know they're always open for everybody faculty staff students at the university uh and we'll go over specifically why to use a certain keyboard or mouse but in the big picture when i look at this it's it's not really i never really get really into keyboards and mice it's usually how you're using them and how they're set up is more of the the risk uh, so like a Mac mini keyboard on there, HDMI cable, I think those are, are very, very helpful. Um, uh, just to plug in somewhere else, you can use, use your input devices on your laptop and just plug into any screen. And uh, that's where a lot of companies and corporations are going. Um, they just kind of set up these rooms with different size tables and people can move around to find the right one that fits them and they can plug in and they're a little bit more mobile. There's a laptop lifter there, some cushions for the chairs. Like I say, most of the time you can find those at home. Um, you know, if there were some things you were going to spend some money on, I know I've got a lot of questions about that. Uh, in terms of chairs and that's probably the one place I go with if you are having chronic you know neck shoulder back issues um, you know you can always move more you can try to you know get better support but the chair is kind of the cornerstone to good ergonomics for long time comp long term computer use so it does give you the good lower back the good back support they are adjustable so you can move them around so it fits you properly uh, and that's always my first go to and then once you get into a good posture there i start building you know the workstation around the, the human body try to stay away from those cheap the the chairs to the right there, the office max chairs for a hundred bucks. Um, they're just anything with arms like that. You you can't get close to the desk. Uh, and they're generally like, you can see they look comfortable with just like a couch. It's comfortable, but not supportive uh, for long-term, for long-term computer use. So there are some, there are some good, you know, chairs um, out there. You know, they're usually a bit more expensive. You know, there are some lower cost ones on Amazon. Um, and you can always reach out to me and ask for opinions. You know, I, I've seen it's 
anything under like $300, you're not really getting a ton of stuff, but a lot of times something that goes up and down and has some support uh, for a hundred or $150 is, is better than what you have at home. So always depends on what you're working with. Uh, tables, I get a lot of questions on those and, and sit stand tables. Like I, I said, I go with the research. Standing is really, really important. Um, I, I've seen it easier to find a standing solution in the house, either in the kitchen or somewhere else using boxes and, um, you know, either the uh, adjustable um, ironing boards or even flipping over uh, laundry room hampers, you know, using what you got around the house to try to get to the right height. So as long as you know you're standing elbow height and you're sitting elbow height, you can try to get to those positions. Uh, you can use different devices. Um, there are like, there are electrical desks on, on, online, you know, usually you get what you pay for. So if they're cheaper electrical desks, they usually don't have a great height range. Uh, so all the desks that we use here on campus fit, you know, almost everybody. So they go from 22 inches to 48 inches. So it fits pretty much everyone from four foot 10 to, to six foot eight. A lot of the cheaper stuff you get online won't fit very many people in a sitting or a standing position. So knowing your, your elbow heights at a sitting and standing position, you can kind of figure out what's going to work for you and what not. Um, so the very desk that those kind of standing units at the bottom right have been super popular uh, the last few years. They're easy. You put them on top of your desk. They allow you to stand, which is true. That's great. Problem is they, stay, they sit on top of the desk, which is usually too high for your sitting position. So even though they afford you the ability to stand, they don't really support a good sitting position really is where, where the most risks lie. Um, because you're sitting for long periods and that's where usually your posture breaks down and that's where you get a lot of the aches and pains from. So being able to stand for shorter periods helps out with the lower back pressure, keeps you moving, but doesn't really help with that supported long-term posture. Uh, so what I have found is that the, the cheaper, like the very basic adjustable um, camping uh, furniture, like the tables there in the middle work pretty well. Uh, they usually don't lock at all the different levels. They'll lock at maybe 22 and 26 and 28 inches, something like that. But you can usually get to a pretty good place at, with them and they're usually like 40, 60 bucks and they're, they're sturdy enough to where they hold up stuff. Of course, they're not super aesthetic. Uh, but there are some pin height tables on there that are you know a little bit more expensive, but they can get you to the right sitting height. And then if you want to put one of those other things on top of there, but those things get a little bit expensive. So what I always try to go is try to get the best sitting posture possible at, at the lower cost. Um, if you can't get that from the house, you know, here's some, some lower, you know, cost solutions. And then again, always feel free to reach out to myself or, or Mallory uh, for any questions. Um, like I said, we heard to support, you know, faculty, staff, but the whole community as well. Um, and it's always changing. The, the biggest problem for us when this, this all in the COVID went down was trying to get furniture, period. Uh, so now it's starting to open up a little bit more. But for a while there, it was just, just hard even to get a desk delivered someplace safely. So a few resources. Uh, like I say, we, you know, all of our programs and funding are, are you know, for faculty and staff, but our, our resources are, are for everyone. So at Be Well at Work, uh, we have ergonomics resources there on our homepage. Um, feel free to use those. Um, and then wellness resources, good stuff for stretching, moving. Um, and again, we're very, very flexible, we're really open. You can come to our classes when they're back available. A lot of them are Zoom. Um, if you want to attend any of those, please reach out. We're very, very flexible with all of that. So that's about all I have for you today. Does anyone have any questions? They could be specific if you want. Yeah, it tends to help. We're all human. We all have very, you know, similar issues. So if we don't really have a place to put a standing, what place is really the best thing to do is in between working, just stand up and walk for a few minutes? It's like, what? Is that like? Um, you said that walking is one of the best movements. Is that better to do than stretching? Should we stretch and walk or I don't know? Yeah, it almost depends on how much, how much time you have. Um, 
you know, we, we did some stuff for the, the today with the custodians and we we're working with a specialist and I guess the new research coming out on muscles is a two minute stretch really helps, which makes sense. We've been doing yoga for, but holding the stretch for longer tends to help. Um, so, you know, I, I like the, the standing up and moving just for blood flow. Uh, I do think that, you know, the static stretching, the dynamic stretching really helps, you know, as well. Uh, it's just tough. I hate to say, like, take a lot of breaks and stretch all day when it's really hard to do that. But, yeah, that's what the research is telling us. If you can't stand, you know, at least get up every once in a while, every half an hour, 45 minutes, at least walk around a little bit. That helps out with your low back because uh, the sitting is really tough. When you sit, you double the pressure on your low back. If you're in a good position, it's probably four to six times the pressure if in a bad position. So that on your lower back is is, is really tough. And, and also I would try to try to find a standing station somewhere, but if not, yeah, I mean, a lot of people get by with just getting up and moving a little bit. Thank you. Thanks. And it looks like we'd have a question from Genevieve. Do you recommend blue light glasses? Good, good question. A um, couple of things I didn't mention there. So thank you. Uh, you know, I've heard there isn't a ton of research out, but I've heard very good things about the, the blue light glasses, um, blue blockers, anti-glare. I've heard mainly good things. Um, the research on that in terms of, you know, from ergonomics, we always go for comfort is really our, our thing. So I know they do help with the comfort and people tend to like them. In terms of what they're supposed to do, they, are, they do tend to block the blue light. Um, but from what I hear is that it, the amount of time that we spend, it doesn't stop um, the negative effects of the blue light from sleep. So that, you know, by putting them on and then, you know, you know, say be on your phone for an hour before you go to sleep, that's not going to help. It's still going to disrupt your sleep um, just because of the levels of the blue light. Um, so I do think they help for comfort. Uh, I do think you have to watch out for the effects in terms of like the kind of the sleep, things like that. Uh, but I have heard really good things about those and the uh, and the anti glare classes as well. Does anyone else have any specific questions? You can put those in the chat too. Not all, I'll go over one other question that I don't know if we got to, which is um, any tips for studying outdoors or on campus? Thank you for bringing that up. That's a real tough one. Uh, as we know, if we go outside, it's the glare is, is really tough with the light. So um, if you are outside, I try to stay away from the light, try to go to um, some place with shade where you can control the light a little bit. Uh, again, shorter periods of time. Um, I think anytime you're outside, it's good to try to move. And I think you're out there to try to move anyway. So I think it's one of those sol uh, solutions that's for short periods of time. And no, it's going to be feel pretty good on your body, but it's you know, going to be tough on your eyes. Uh, yeah, it's really tough on your eyes outside. And then we have another question from Josh. Are e-ink devices helpful, such as Kindle? In terms of like writing on them or, uh, or, guess, or, or just reading them? I guess what, yeah, reading mainly. So yeah, they, they, I mean, they, they fall into the same kind of category, you know, as any kind of screen. Um, so just like your phone or the TV or, you know, they're not great for your eyes. Uh, so they would fall into that same categories where you don't want to spend, you know, you want to take some breaks. Um, you know, I, I think everyone's a little bit different there. I think some people are really comfortable on those devices. You know, I, I'm a little more old school. I try to mix it up. I mean, obviously I read a lot off screens, but uh, I try to carry a book around too, just to, to mix it up a little bit. Um, so I think you got to go with what's kind of comfortable for you, but yeah, they fall in the same, 
same zone as a, a, a any kind of screen. Uh, and they're generally kind of tough because if you think about your phones, um, that's I think why we're seeing a lot of neck issues, you know, with both the laptop and a phone, your neck is, is constantly looking down uh, unless you hold it up high and then your shoulders are going to hurt. So um, I think with those devices, you're, you're holding them and your neck's looking down. I think those are kind of so, some of the risks. So, you know, trying to get some support while you're sitting, leaning back a little bit and trying to raise it up and, and get your neck in a good place. But I think that's why we're seeing a, a ton of neck issues now between the phone, the, the Kindles and the iPads and, and, the, and the laptops, a lot of neck looking down flexion. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I have another question, if it's okay. Um, uh, for looking at, like, every 20 minutes, looking at something 20 feet away, um, is that good to, is it okay to look outside of your window? Or does that, like, face the same problem of, like, eye strain? You know, it does. Um, and though that's where it gets to... Uh, it gets really, it gets pretty tricky with the eyes there. So yes, you know, looking out will give your eyes a break. Uh, we'll allow them to blink. But if you are looking outside, like I am doing now, and I like to do it, it's tougher on my eyes. Um, you know, like it, there's not going to be a perfect situation. You know, I've, I've gone to, you know, I pulled down my blinds in my office and it's just not as enjoyable for me, you know, like it's probably better for my eyes to have them down, but um you know, there are, there are wellness components too, to looking outside and seeing some greenery. And I think that's where people have to kind of balance things out a little bit. You know, I know it's not good for me to do this all day, um, but I don't love looking at blinds either. So, uh, but again, I'm not having super terrible eye issues. Um, so I know a colleague of mine is going through some really bad eye issues. Like, and so, you know, all that, no glare, no outside light, you know, going through the nth degree to try to figure out, you know, all the blue light that, you know, so I think it always, always depends. I think it's kind of the issue with ergonomics, you know, I say depends a lot, but, you know, we're all different. We all have different issues, you know, visually, physically. And um, so trying to tailor your ergonomics around that and spending, spending time, because you don't have time to figure out every little thing. But if, you know, if your visual things is it's like, I'm getting older, um, visual things is a huge deal for me. So like working on a, off a 13 inch screen is just horrible. So me, it was getting external, you know, screen, uh, TV, something I could plug into really helped me out a lot. Um, you know, I think for other people standing, you know, everyone's a little different. So, uh, but those aren't, those are definitely not easy ones uh, to address either. Does anyone else have any last questions? If not, do you want to say how people can contact you, Greg? Absolutely. Uh, so the email is gryan at berkeley.edu. Uh, phone number is 510-642-5549. And like I said, any questions, um, comments, do you need help with anything, you know, please let us know. And if there's anything for future, this, this is all keeps changing. Um, and it seems like every time I do this, it has changed a little bit more. So, um, you know, we can always check in at a later date, even for a shorter period of time or so, and just give you the latest on what's, what's happening. And that's kind of a lot of what I'm doing right now, just trying to stay up to date on all the, the latest information and what's available, what's working for people, what's not. And, um, but a lot of things that in your comments resonated with me, a lot of these kind of lower cost solutions um, that we've been focusing on and will continue to focus on. So uh, it's good to check in and see what's available. But like I said, those, those have been the ones that I've had a lot of success with. Uh, uh, the camping furniture is not, not the best looking, but it is, it is functional. Okay, great. And then if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask the last one, but we'll also have this recording. Well, we have your email addresses, so we'll be sure to send the recording out to everyone as well. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, and like, if you go to our website, uh, all the resources are there. Um, but if you need anything else, uh, we're here for you. <laughs>